A city, like its people, has its generations. When it grows old, a new city must take its place. The city of Chicago has grown up fast, spreading over what seemed a century ago, an endless plain. In the process, Chicago produced the world's first skyscraper and some of its finest architecture. But the city grew without a comprehensive plan. Inevitably, some of it grew chaotically. It has not weathered well. Today, the endless plain is gone. We must build a new city on top of the old. Today, we have, and have to have, a comprehensive plan for the city of Chicago, taking into account the needs of all the people to have a decent place to live, the need for living space, for convenient transportation systems and commercial centers, for playgrounds and schools, for parks, grass, and trees, all the elements that make the city a good place to live. The comprehensive plan designates 47 areas in Chicago for renewal. 25 of these have been completed. The city also is saving old buildings that are still sound and useful, maintaining the character of a neighborhood and renewing it where that is possible. tearing down what stands in the way of a better city. Some buildings must go simply because they occupy space needed for something else. But for the most part, it's the worn out areas of the city that are making way for the new. Places that are no longer habitable. Places beyond repair. Each year, 3,000 families are displaced by urban renewal. This is only 1.7% of the 175,000 Chicagoans who move in a year. Still, those displaced rarely find it easy. This film is about some of those people, real people who will tell the story in their own way. I've lived here so many years, it's just kind of hard to tear up the roots. I know the children want to move. But now, I couldn't take their part. I'm just giving you my opinion. Yes, I'll be glad to move. I just don't want to move anywhere. I don't want to be thrown away, regardless of how old I am. You'll move a whole lot more people, mister, before you move me, believe me. Me, know. after 72 years? <laughs> An old man after 76? Hey, ain't very nice, you know. Where are we going to go? Gonna find me a place? Well, the city is going to help find the place. That is the job of the relocation worker. The Department of Urban Renewal has 125 such people working every day to help families from renewal areas get relocated in good housing. Betty Stewart is one of those relocation workers. How did it get this way? There are more good people than bad people living in these rundown buildings. And yet they have to suffer the insanitary conditions, the unsafe conditions, the fire, all the havoc that goes with this kind of living. Take the money. What do you want? Mrs. Bay? I'm Mrs. Stewart from Urban Renewal Relocation. As you know, we're going to have to move, and I think I'll be able to help you. You'll be the first.
first one? Well, we have some things to talk about that I'm sure will help make it much easier for you. I mean, won't you let me come in and explain it to you? All right, come on in. Thank you. Turn that television down. Uh, Jane, this is Miss um... Stewart. Glad to Mrs. Stewart. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm from Urban Renewal, the Relocation mm -hmm. Division. Oh, yes, ma'am. And uh, as I explained to Mrs. Bay, I'm here to help you find a place to move. Uh -huh. You know, the city has purchased this building from the owner. Yes, ma'am, we knew that. When we uh, rented the place, the guy told us that the building would be torn down. Well, this is correct, and as I said, I'm here to help you find another place, and a good place. Uh, we have time on our side. Uh, we have time to prepare for this move. Um, we'll make it as easy as we possibly can. You mean with 12 children, you can make it easy? You have 12 children? Yes, I have. Well, needless to say, this is a problem. But uh, we're going to do it. Well, that'll be better than we have did. We've been searching for 10 years. Well, it's our job to look for housing on a daily basis, including uh, housing for families like yourself, large families. Uh, but let's not go into that right now. May I take a look at your apartment? The first visit to a family by a relocation worker is a sort of fact-finding mission. Usually it takes time for all the families in a building to relocate and usually the building is in pretty bad shape. The relocation worker checks for dangerous conditions which the city as new temporary landlord must take care of. The city will patch up plumbing and wiring, board up windows and vacant apartments to discourage vandalism, make sure there's enough heat and so forth. Whatever is needed to make the place as livable as possible until all the tenants are out. The worker must know whether there are any special problems, like 12 children, that will affect the effort to find a new place to live. What sort of resources does the family have for acquiring new housing? What kind of housing do they want? Can they afford it? In general, a history of each family and its needs. We moved in this place here because at least it had heat. Where we moved from, from out on Green Street, we had no heat. And we moved here in the dead of the winter time just before the big snowstorm. And we were lucky to get in here and find some place to keep warm. There are 12 children in the Bay family. Uh, according to Mrs. Bay, they've moved 25 or 30 times in the last 10 years. Have we moved them before? According to Mrs. Bay, no. Uh, Mr. Bay is a skilled worker. He's a car upholsterer by trade and a very good provider, it seems. After Betty Stewart finds out what the situation is, she reports it to her supervisor, Archie Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez's job is to know what's needed, make sure it gets done, and to coordinate the special services of the division. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Whitehall, we found a unit for them. They accepted it. Uh, they were to go and uh, sign the lease tomorrow. However, Mr. Whitehall has been fired for alcoholism. A great deal of the relocation division's time is absorbed by problem families like the Whitehalls. The division works closely with other public and private agencies to help such families, providing public assistance, job training and placement, health care and other services. Relocation for many families has meant not only better housing, but a better life. Will do. Fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ray, how is your workload coming along? Pretty well. I want to discuss a few of the uh, problems I encountered when I was in the field yesterday. Remember the um, daughter, the younger daughter... Ray Cheris, like Betty Stewart or any relocation worker, must work with families with problems. However, the main job and the first duty of the division is to find good housing for every family that moves, for the average families that need nothing more than a good place to live. And remember the Ortons that uh, we're moving? Well, I went to see them, and uh, they've lived in this place, you know, now for 13 years, and um, they're distressed and distraught about moving from this place, although it is most inadequate. They find it home and uh, dislike moving. There is a good income and a steady income. Mr. Orton has worked for 21 years at the same place. Uh, attention, please. Last call for the Burlington Railroad, Morning Zephyr, train number 21. It is now loading through gate number 12. Last call. Harvey Orton came back from World War II and went to work at Union Station. He's worked there ever since.
For the last 13 years, he and his wife Elizabeth have lived in a studio apartment in the Norwell building at North Avenue and Wells. Now the building's coming down. And finding a place for the Ortons is Ray Cheris' responsibility. Hello, this is Mrs. Cheris in the Department of Urban Renewal. Oh, I called you about an apartment that you had advertised in the paper. I'm interested in it for one of our tenants. Betty Stewart, meanwhile, is house hunting for the Bay family. The policy of the relocation division is to offer families as many choices as possible. This means some hard searching, because there's only so much housing available for families on limited income. And not any place will do. Where people move is their own decision. But if the city is to assist in that move, the new place must measure up to the city building codes. And it must cost no more than 25% of a tenant's income. Frequently, the greatest service the relocation division can perform is simply to inform people of the choices open to them. Families are advised that they have first priority on FHA loans and public housing if they want it. And they have the energies of the department's relocation workers to help them find the kind of place they want. married lives, Mr. and Mrs. Bay had wanted to buy a house, but thought it beyond their means. Mrs. Bay fell in love with this house, and with the help of an FHA-insured loan, they were able to buy it. Harvey and Elizabeth Orton, however, are confirmed oh, apartment I'm dwellers. Aren't the trees beautiful, Harvey? And this is your apartment, and this is your balcony. How nice. You know, this, as I told you, was a rehabilitated building, and your... This building was rehabilitated with a low-interest, government-insured loan for moderate-income families. The Ordens looked at several places, but liked this one the best. They signed the lease and got ready to move. The Department of Urban Renewal pays for moving expenses up to a maximum of $200. It will pay the mover directly, if the family chooses a mover, as the Ortons have, or it will pay a flat fee per room of furniture. The Bays decided to do their own moving. After moving 30 times in the past 10 years, sometimes in the dead of winter, this move was a picnic. Even the Bays' dog, McLeod, came along for the ride. Find a spot. Oh, that's not so difficult. You gonna play us a tune, Harvey? I don't believe so today. Do you think you're gonna be happy here? Oh, we like it. It's, it's clean, it's been redecorated, and the plumbing is good, in good condition, and there's a nice frigid air. And the stove works, but uh, the gas man and the telephone man were, were both here and we missed them. So I don't know what about the gas. Well, when did the gas man say he was going to get the gas on for you? He said, he left a uh, slip. It said uh, he'd be back the 28th. That's um, three days away. Well, I'll call the office and see if our management aide can get that gas installed for you before the weekend. You know, one has to eat if he can. You've got to have the coffee and so forth, you know. How do you like this place, Mr. Arkin? Well, it's a big difference uh, over the old place. There's more room here. It's quieter. And uh, what bugged me about the old place is you had to, the elevator would go on and blink, and you had to walk up four floors. Here, on the second floor, it's easier to walk up and down. There's no elevator to worry about here. It's very nice and quiet. Yeah. And uh, the rent, uh, not much more than what we paid down there. 
course, we have to pay our own utilities here, but it's worth it. It's quieter. It's a nice courtyard, and there's more room. So we're happy. Hi, Mrs. Bay. How are you? Come on in and take a look at the place. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. Do you have any problems yet? No, except in, it'll look better after we get furniture in it. But I'm oh. pretty proud of it anyway. I would imagine it's lovely, and the lawn is beautiful. Boy, you should see the back one. It's nice, have all kind of flowers out there. The only fault I find in the backyard, though, is the bees. Oh, the bees. You don't have a beehive. <laughs> no, I don't imagine so. <laughs> Very good. I think that's a little better than those other little things that crawl around, don't you? Oh, that's better than the other place. Yeah. The Bay's new house is lovely. A good kitchen, a bathroom where the plumbing really works. The house is the kind of house we dream about for most of our families. The um, recreational possibilities in the basement, for example. Uh, the children being able to entertain in the basement. The aesthetic part particularly appeals to me as it appeals to Mrs. Bay. The grass, the trees, the flowers, the ability to go outside and do something. Uh, so the children are not underfoot most of the time. The Bays had always uh, dreamed of a house. They just didn't know the formal steps to take. All of our families do not move to standard beautiful places. They sometimes move from substandard to um, nice places, or maybe not so nice because there isn't <clears throat> this grass, this outside area, uh, all the other things the bays have. There are times when the city is unable to meet all of its relocation standards. It happened, for example, when fire drove the tenants from this building on South Kimbart Street, among them a mother of four who receives aid to dependent children. The relocation division found another apartment within three days, but it is not adequate to this woman's needs. It is difficult when there's no father in the home and no money. The city, in this case, paid the two months advance rent required by the landlord. It arranged to move whatever furnishing survived the fire and replaced some that were lost, including beds for the children. But the apartment is small. The family had six rooms in the old place. Here, there are only four. The dining room had to be converted into this second bedroom to make enough sleeping space for all, the mother, her two daughters, and the two sons. The family is crowded here. However, the building is basically sound. The mother has told her relocation worker that she does like the new neighborhood, that she's grateful to have found a place so soon after the fire, and she will make do until something better can be found for her as it has been for others. Andrew Chitwood, Jr. and his family moved into public housing at 2745 West 25th Street. It's not fancy, but they like it. My children uh, got plenty of places to play. And it's a real convenient neighborhood here. We all are in better health here, and it's a nicer place. And we have four bedroom for the children, which we were living in furnished apartments. We had lots of bugs and so on and so forth. It was really run down building. We didn't have no place to go. Didn't know anybody that could help us. So this lady from the renewal service come along. She took the application for the project. And there she went to work on it. And finally got us in. And with the help of the urban renewal service, has really been good to us. Because Mrs. Churis, she's made several trips and called us different times in uh, finding out if we were satisfied or had the right kind of housing. And Andrew Chitwood came to Chicago from Tennessee. 
and landed a job as a punch press operator. Things went pretty well until he got rheumatic fever, an illness that left him forever unable to do any kind of heavy work. Today he's receiving public aid and trying to learn a new and less strenuous craft. James Raskey owned the Guys and Dolls Tavern at 1702 North Larrabee. It was torn down, and he was sorry to see his tavern and the block he lived on go. I naturally missed the neighborhood, of course, when it was standing there. And then, uh, well, when it was gone, it was just like moving from any place, I, as far as I was concerned. I have all my friends in the old neighborhood. It's been hard for me because I still go down there now. I don't really... My daughter has, has found it hard because she was, we've been in that neighborhood 13 years and she's 17. And she's used to her friends and school. Now she'll have to change all that. But with me, it makes no difference to me because as long as I have my family with me, that's all that matters. Mrs. Vicki Jenkins is a painter, so she needs an apartment with studio space. She had one she liked and the thought of leaving it didn't please her. I think I had butterflies in my stomach. You know, it's, uh, it was a feeling of disappointment and uh, covered with anxiety, I think, about uh, the future, whether I'd find a place I liked and all that sort of thing. We were quite sentimental about the other place. We had liked it. Uh, we had a fine landlord and been comfortable there. And uh, we're just a little bit disappointed, certainly, in having to move. But now that we're here, I'm satisfied. In fact, uh, I like it better. Truthfully, I like it better. I don't think I ever wanted to live in it because it was something new. I've gotten rid of that. I'm happy to be in here now. I wasn't used to this type of a building, not used to seeing it, even though I had seen Marina City. I still, still had a peculiar feeling about the building, wondering what it was looking like on the inside. So Mrs. Blanche day, Walton has taught day, music day, in Chicago for 50 day, years day, and still day, teaches day, three days a week. This apartment in the Raymond Hilliard Homes for Senior Citizens cost her $52.50 a month. But now I've gotten used to the outside. I think it's beautiful. You know, when some people begin to get old and begin to get up years and years, see, they seem to have a feeling of not being wanted or not being needed or not being a part of a society. But when they come into a building like this, they're made a part, and they're made to feel that they are a part. The whole thing together has been a very beautiful setup. For naturally, I'm more than happy to be able to say that I'm a part of the senior citizens at 30 West Cermak Road. The city of Chicago looks to the day when every one of its citizens will be proud of his home and his community. That is the goal of those assigned the task of building and rebuilding the city. And it is the goal of those concerned with relocation of its people. The director of that program, within the Department of Urban Renewal, is Mrs. Ozzie Badal. The job of relocation is to help people who have to move to find a decent place at a price that they can afford. The housing is available in Chicago, but it becomes a matter of matching the people with the right kind of housing whether they want to rent an apartment or to purchase a home. In most cases, the job can be done in a matter of days or a few weeks. But for the large family with low income, the job takes much longer in most instances. It may take months and maybe a year or more. Sometimes we have to settle for a halfway situation before we find the right kind of housing. The biggest problem with the large family are the landlords who refuse to take families with children. The worker has to then persuade the landlord to look at each family individually, not to merely make the statement that they don't want children, but what kind of family are they talking about. The relocation worker's job is a very sensitive job. It's not simply a matter of helping to find housing. It's also a matter of trying to find out what other human needs the families have. There are all kinds of problems that that come up in the search for housing. There is the lack of employment, helping the family to find a place to get a job. There is the problem of physical ailments and not knowing what clinics and what facilities are available for them to go to. There are many other kinds of problems and there are many agencies that can provide help. And it's surprising how many people don't know what is available to them or are frightened by the vast size of the kind of agency that they can go to for help. 
Relocation person has to be a very sensitive person. Relocation workers are under civil service, and he has to have not only the ability to pass the examination, but he also has to have a feeling for people. He has to care about people, care about communities, care about the city and the way of life in a city. We deal every day with people who begin to feel like non-persons living in the city. A city is a place in which people can get lost. They don't know their neighbors. They don't know the people who live in their building. They feel that nobody cares about them, whether they live well, poorly, or live at all. We try to make them feel that they are wanted, that there are things that can be done for them. Moving out of the slum does not always solve all the problems. For some, the hurt of living in the slum is a lasting one. But for most of the families, the opportunity of new housing, the opportunity of a decent neighborhood makes many changes in their lives. It provides them with the opportunity for doing and solving the other problems they may have without having to worry about the kind of housing they do live in. This is the kind of work that the relocation worker is charged with. And it's the kind of help that can be given to people in Chicago to better the quality of their living, to give them the dignity that every Chicagoan should have. <laughs> Urban renewal is primarily human renewal. It is making Chicago a better place to live. Thank <laughs> you.